Okay, tonight we've got Phillies against the Nationals with Bryce Harper facing off against his former team. And if you look on ESPN, you see this Washington minus 200 here. So the Phillies are plus 180 and the Nationals are minus 200 for the money line odds. And uh, I think that's kind of an interesting to think, uh, thing to look at to understand. So let's take a look at uh, money line odds and how those translate to probabilities and how you could understand the Kelly formula as a way of making bets. Let's look at a few examples of the money line odds and the Kelly formula. Question number one says, if the odds on the Phillies are minus 150 money line, what does that mean in terms of the implied probability they will win the game? Write the probability as a percentage. Well, when it says minus 150 money line, that means the odds are 100 to 150 against. And when you say odds against, you're saying the first number represents the number of ways that the event does not happen. The second number here, 150, would be the number of ways the event does happen. And so if you were looking at the probability of the Phillies winning, we're saying there's 150 ways they do win and 100 they don't win out of a total which, that you get from adding these together. So the number of ways they win is 150 out of the total. 100 plus 150 is 250. 150 over 250 is 0.6, so the probability is 0.6, or 60%. The next question says, if the 76ers are plus 120 money line against the Celtics, what does this mean in terms of implied probability that the Sixers will win the game? Write the probability as a percentage. So the plus 120, when you have plus 120, what happens is you put that number first, 120 to 100 against are the odds. And uh, that means there's 120, way, 120 ways that they don't win and 100 that they do win out of the total 220. And so if this is the number of ways they do win, the probability that the 76ers do win would be the number of ways that they do win out of the total 220, 100 over 220. That's 0.45, approximately. I'm rounding off, so this is approximately 45% chance. So you notice that when it's a plus, that's how much you would win for a $100 bet. You would put that number first and then a 100. And if it's a minus one a minus uh, money line, that means you put 100 first and the actual number second. So another way to read this is you have to bet $150 to win 100 when it's a minus money line. Comparing it with a plus money line, a plus you're going to put the number first and it means that you would win $120 uh, profit on every $100 bet. And so plus means that's the amount that you would get on a hundred dollar bet and a minus means that's how much you would have to bet to get a hundred dollars. Okay this next question number three says if the point spread on the Eagles and Bears is Eagles minus three and a half with a money line of minus 110 what does this money line imply as the probability the Eagles would beat the spread? So to say Eagles minus three and a half means the Eagles would have to win by four points or more to beat the spread, and we're looking at the odds on that particular spread at minus 110. So just as before, when it's a minus money line, that means that's how much you would have to bet to win $100 on that particular event. So essentially you're saying that this is the probability that the Eagles would win by more than three and a half, by four points or more. And since it's a minus 110, that translates to odds against as 100 to 110, meaning you'd have to bet 110 to win 100. And it also means that the probability is 110 ways that it does happen out of a total 210. You see I add 100 plus 110 to get the total number of possibilities. And 110 divided by 210 is approximately 0.52. I think it was 0.5238. So I'm just rounding off to two places. We would say approximately 52% chance. Another way to look at that would be that if you thought that the probability was greater than 52%, that the Eagles would win by four or more, then this would be a good bet to take. And if you were thinking it's only 50% or less, then this wouldn't be a good bet to take. You'd probably take the opposite bet. 
Moving on to number four, it says, Part A, if a gambler repeatedly bet on teams that were minus 150 money line, what percentage of the bets would the gambler have to win to break even? And then part B, what percentage of the bets would the gambler have to win to make a profit? So it's because that minus 150, we've already translated that minus 150 to mean a probability of 60%. So that means you'd, you'd have to win 60% of the bets at minus 150 to break even. And if you bet, if you won more than 60% of the bets, then you would actually make a profit on that on that particular on odds of minus 150. If you could win more than 60% of them, you would win. Uh, you would make a profit. We could see that that makes sense. We could check that with expected value. This is a way of confirming that it makes sense using the concept of an expected value. See, when the minus 150 implies a money line of 60%, if, um, well, if you were really winning that bet 60% of the time, if you had a six, it's basically saying a 60% chance of winning $100 and therefore a 40% chance of losing 150 because it takes a $150 bet to win the $100 profit. So if you actually won, you would get back 250. But here's a, a little bit more explanation of what where I'm getting this calculation. What I'm saying is there's a 60% chance that you win $100 and you get your 150 back, but of course you had to pay 150 to win the 100. So this is where you, your profit of $100 comes in. 60% chance of making a $100 profit and you have a 40% chance of getting zero, but you still paid the 150 for the bet. So that's why I'm saying 0.4 times 150 negative. And, and that adds up to zero. So if you continued making those bets and winning 60% of the time, and 60% of the time picking up $100, and 40% of the time losing 150, you'll just break even. So if you could win more than 60%, you'd make a profit. It's a similar calculation back here where where we had that 52% probability what you could say is that if you could you would make a profit if you could if you were correct more than 52% of the time. Let's move to question number 5 part A it says if a gambler repeatedly bet on teams that were plus 150 money line what percentage of the bets would the gambler have to win to break even? And what percentage of the bets would the gambler have to win to make a profit? So just exactly in the same way as I did the question number four, when I see this plus 150 money line, I translate that 150 money line, it means 150 to 100. And so the probability is 100 over 250, and that's 0.4. So if I know the odds are 150 to 100 against, that means there's 100 ways it happens and 150 ways it doesn't happen. And so the chance of, it, of winning that bet is 100 over 250 total, or 40% chance. So you'd have to win 40% of the time to make a profit on a plus 150 money line. And you'd have to win over 40%. Sorry, you'd have to win exactly 40% to break even, and you'd have to win over 40% uh, to make a profit. And you can see that expected value calculation working out to zero exactly when you have a 40% probability of winning 150 and a 60% chance of losing 100. So with, with that 40% probability of winning 150 and 60% chance of losing 100, you exactly even out to zero over, over the long run. You could think of it as four times out of 10, you pick up 150, and the other six times out of 10, you lose 100. Imagine if you four times you won 150, so four times 150, that would give me 600 bucks. But then six times I lose 100, so then I lose my 600, and overall those two would cancel out to zero. Okay, so number six says, a gambler bets $10 on the Phillies at minus 150 money line against the Braves. If the Phillies win, what is the profit? So we can write that minus 150 is, because it's a minus, you know that means you have to bet 150 to win 100, 100 to 150 against. But maybe you don't really want to bet a whole $150. Maybe you only want to bet 10. So you can uh, reduce this ratio by dividing both sides by either number. Let's divide both sides by the 150. So if you take both numbers, 
divide both of them by this number, it means that it translates it to about 0.67 to 1 against. And writing it in that form means I know for every dollar you would win a profit of 67 cents. So that means you get back a dollar 67. Each dollar bet returns a dollar 67 if it's a good if it's a winning bet. So the profit on a ten dollar bet would be just multiply this by ten and therefore multiply this by ten. Uh, now this is rounded off, so it might not be exactly six dollars and seventy cents. Let's say approximately, because this could be 0.66 repeating, uh, or you know. 0.667, so so profit on a $10 bet is, let's say, approximately $6.70. Depends on where they round off. If the Phillies win, what does that gambler get back in total? Right, so you bet 10, and you're right, so that's your profit, so you could add those together. You get the wager back plus the 670. So the bet amount plus the 670 so the answer is $16.70, approximately. So what's the return on investment? Return on investment is the profit divided by the investment. So in this case, we could call the $10 bet the amount that was invested. We can say the profit is $6.70. So that puts us at 0.67. So we could say that's a 67% return on investment. Okay, now uh, before we get to the Kelly formula, we get a little bit further uh, toward looking at this calculation for a future amount based on betting only a fraction of your bankroll. So if you bet everything in your bankroll and there was just one loss, if you bet 100% and you lost one time, it's all gone. So it would be reasonable to think, well, let's just bet some fraction. Like maybe we'll bet one quarter of what we have or 10% of what we have, or we might bet 50%. So we could change that depending on what the um, given odds are and what we think the real probability is for a particular event. Um, and uh, in fact, one of the places this, this first is used is if you are counting cards uh, and you had a different estimate of the true probability of a particular card uh, coming up, uh, and the real probability that you could calculate was different than the given odds in the game, uh, this would tell you what fraction you should bet of what you actually have. So this formula, um, I mean, you, the Kelly formula would tell you what fraction, and, and this would based on those different fractions this is the this is the value that you would be trying to optimize you'd be trying to get the the largest future balance okay so this formula tells me what the future balance would be if i chose to make fractional bets fractions of what i currently have in the bankroll so a is the future balance b is the starting balance uh, that you begin with it's your initial bankroll in the equation or formula here, I have a 1 plus b. b would be the given odds in the game uh, when it's written in the form b to 1. So you might have to translate money line into b to 1 uh, odds into the form b to 1 against. So b is just the part of the odds when it's written in this form b to 1 against. It's the b value x is this fraction of whatever current balance you have. So um, it's not a fraction of the starting balance. It's a fraction of the starting balance on the first bet. It's a fraction of the balance that you have on the second bet. It's the fraction of whatever current balance you have. You're going to bet that fraction, maybe 20%, maybe 30%, maybe 50%. Unlikely that it would be 100% unless you, you know, somehow turned out to be a 100% probability that it was going to, the event was going to occur. So W represents the number of times the gambler actually wins and the number of times the gambler actually loses. Now, the gambler would not know that ahead of time, um, and so it would only be possible to know that if you knew what the actual, real, true probability of a particular event is, which, of course, is what's always going to be the real challenge. What is the real, true probability? It isn't necessarily the odds that are given by the, the bookmaker, um, 
and and that's where as a gambler you would consider what does the bookmaker say the odds are and what do I think the odds are and if there's a little bit of difference there that's where you might have an edge so and if you were correct then the number of times you win is and the number of times you lose is exactly that true probability so all right so anyway so so if you look at numbers of wins and losses with a starting balance, we could calculate what that future balance would have been if such a, a you know particular event occurs or a particular series of bets occurs. So question number seven, a gambler wins five out of 10 wagers. In other words, the real true probability of this particular event was 50% because it happens five times out of 10. So if he's betting on a plus 200 and wins five of them, that true probability was 50%. Right? So if the gambler wins 5 out of 10 wagers, each at money line odds of plus 200, uh, if the starting balance was $100 and the gambler was betting 10% of the current balance at each wager, what's the final balance? So like he keeps betting on on a on a uh, event that has a plus 200 money line, and he's betting 10% uh, of his uh, current balance. Uh, what would be the future amount? So we could calculate that. Let's say A is the starting amount, $100, 1 plus, now this 200 means 200 to 100 against. So this is an unlikely event because it, if we're saying that it happens 100 ways and it doesn't happen 200 ways out of 300 total, right? So it means 2 to 1 odds against. So it's, you know, it which means the probability is is 33%, right? 1 out of 3. So if that's really the true odds, this is only going to happen 33% of the time. But if that's what the 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 odds say, uh plus 200. But in fact, if it really happened 5 times out of 10, the real true probability is 50% it's not likely that there would be that much of a difference between what the bookie says and what the actual real odds are. But as an example, suppose that you were betting on a plus 200 event, got it right five out of 10 times. If you were betting 10% each time, what would you end up with? So we've got a B equal to two, right? This is the B. B equals two because it's two to one. The plus 200 means two to one. So you put two for the B and because the x is 10%, because it's 10%, the x is 0.10. And so then the wins five times, 1 minus the 0.10. So the loss is also five times. So simplifying this, I mean, you could just type it in, but simplifying it, you can understand what's going on. 2 times 0.10, adding it to the 1 gives me 1.25 to power 5, and then 0.9 to a power of five. So this is a place where you can sort of understand how this thing works. If you bet 10% at two to one odds, you're gonna get $2 for every $1 you bet. So you're actually gonna get a 20% increase if you bet 10%. So you get a 20% increase in your balance five times, because you win five times. So, so if you started with $100, and there were five times when your account went up by 20%, but then there were five times that your account went down by 10%. So you only had 90% because you were betting 10% of what you had. And if you lost, you lose 10%. You would only have 90%. Now, it doesn't matter what order that could happen. You could get um, five wins in a row and then five losses. Or you could get a win and then a loss and then a win and a loss back and forth. But we're saying, because, of course, multiplying this out doesn't matter what order it is. So if you had five times that your account went up 20% and five times that it went down 10%, what would you have at the end? Well, that works out pretty good. That's $146.93. Of course, of course it's going to be a profit because you're winning half the time on something that only had an implied probability of 33%. So you would only have to win 33% of the time to make a profit, and this is winning 50% of the time. So of course it's a profit, and it's actually a pretty good profit. $46 increase uh, over that series of uh, 10 wagers. So I say, okay, let's look at question eight. What if you could win five times out of 10 on another similar event that was plus 200? So plus 200 comes along sometimes. Um, it's 
unlikely that you could actually win five times out of ten, but I'm using some sort of extreme examples to to make it easier, the numbers easier to see, to really sharpen the uh, the concepts here, right? So if imagine getting five times out of ten on a plus two hundred um, event and starting with a hundred dollars, but let's say you push it up to twenty five percent, more a little bit more optimistic, and you you risk twenty five percent of whatever you have at every single one of those opportunities, ten bets in a row. You win some and you lose some. It turns out you win half the time. You are betting on something that was a plus two hundred. So how much would you have at the end? So we have the same calculation: one hundred dollars to start, one plus because it's two to one. It's the same odds plus two hundred. So two to one odds, but now we've pushed it up to 25%. So that's what the X is. X is 0.25 in this example. So that happens five times, but you're betting 25%, and five times you lose. So one minus 0.25 means you're going to be looking at um, a 25% loss five times. So simplifying this just a little bit further to see some of the significance here, two times 0.25, that's 0.50. Add the 1, you got 1.50. So betting at 2 to 1, 25% of your uh, bankroll means that each time that you win, you double what you wagered. So if you were wagering 25%, you get back 50%. So you have a 50% increase, which is why I have a 1.50. That's a 50% increase on your starting amount, which you started with 100, it's actually a 50% increase on whatever you currently have. So, so, you know, in the first case you would have 150, but then if you have 150, you get a 50% increase on top of that. So that would multiply out five times, but they don't have to be in a row. You could win, then lose, then lose a couple times, then win a couple times. Overall, it doesn't really matter what order it happens, but five times you will see the account go up by 50%. And five times you would see the account go down by 25%. So what would it add up to be in the end? So type all that in and you've got 180. So it turned out that uh, 180, 20 cents. So it's the exact same odds and still winning half the time at plus 200, but this is a better overall return on investment, an 80% increase versus a 46 or 47% increase. So you say, oh, the 25% is a better choice. If you are in the situation that you could win half the time at plus 200, you should bet maybe 25% seems like a better choice than betting 10%. So this is what the... Kelly formula can help us decide where is the best fraction to bet. And uh, it's not apparent yet what it is because you could say, well, if 25% is good, well, maybe we should go up to 30%. Maybe that's even better. So let's take a look number nine, see what happens there. So you have, suppose, the same exact situation. Some event that repeats over and over where you see plus 200 money line odds. So again, it means the event has a implied probability of two to one again. So you're getting two dollars profit for every one dollar. Like a one dollar bet would give you three dollars back. You get a, um, you're getting an increase uh, a, a double whatever you you had wagered. Right? So it's two to one odds, uh, which really would typically happen around 33% of the time, if you kept doing that, you wouldn't have, you know, because that's what the implied probability is. But if it, if it was something that you could spot, five, you know, and get right five times out of ten, if you were right just half the time, that's more than 33% of the time, and that means you would make a profit. So how much profit would you get, let's say, betting 30% of your um, current balance at each one of those opportunities? So that's what this formula tells us what the future bankroll is. So we have future amount is the same $100 to start, the same odds of 2 to 1, but we've increased it to 30% wager, and we win five times. And if we're wagering 30%, then five times we lose, and we have only 70% of whatever the current balance is. So that happens five times. So $100. This is 1.60 because 2 times 0.30 is 0.60. So you have a 60% increase five times 
and a 30% loss five times. Ah, I said that. A 30% loss is right. A 30% loss means you have 70%. So, you know, it's kind of hard to tell because exponents are hard to do in your head. Would you rather get 50% five times, 50% increase five times, and lose 25% five times? Or is it better to get 60% increase five times and lose 30% five times? It doesn't even really matter what you start with, but in both cases we're starting with 100. So if you do this calculation, and of course remember it doesn't matter what order those wins and losses come in because you can multiply these out in any particular order. Multiplying that all out comes out to 176.23. So that's interesting. So 30% is 30% is not as good as 25%. You're not getting as much overall in the end. You're just a little short. So it seems at the moment to be the best value. Now that's actually what the Kelly formula provides. It tells me that 25% would be. It, it's a shortcut to know what percentage you should bet with a particular given odds, knowing a real true probability of, a, of, an, of, an out, of the uh, outcome of an event. So it would locate this maximum fraction, the optimal fraction. So this actually is the optimal fraction. It's not obvious here. You might wonder, well, 26, 24. Well, it actually is 0.25 because I can get that from the Kelly formula. So you can see that 30%, it produces a lower overall rate of return, or total return on investment, and the per bet rate of return is lower with the 30%. And you can see that it's a lower total amount, and that's, that's the clear point uh, here. Okay, so finally, now we get to number 10, and we can actually talk about what the Kelly formula is. The Kelly formula is a formula that comes up in gambling originally. It can be applied in um, choosing uh, how much to bet in, or how, how much to invest in stocks, but it, it's this formula where you get the value of x, that is the fraction you should bet. It's based on this p times b minus q, all divided by b, where p represents the real true probability of a particular event, which, of course, that's the biggest challenge. Um, once you understand all these concepts, is you still generally don't know what the real true probability of an event is, uh, you know, because nobody knows. Uh, in usually most of these things that we're betting on, we don't really know what the true probability is. It's like the weather, you know, we can have an estimate from the, uh, you know, weather channel that there's a 70% chance of rain, but is that really exactly correct? Um, you know, and also you think about it like, suppose that it does rain, does and, and then it, the probability was 70%, does, does that mean it was right? Um, not necessarily. Um, it was always a, an estimate. And um, let's suppose that, you know, the the probability is, is 80% that it rains, and it doesn't. Well, there was a 20% chance that it didn't rain. So it still could be correct. That 80% chance of rain might have been correct, even if it didn't rain. So uh, just like in forecasting the weather and forecasting a probability of a win in a sporting event, or, you know, in politics, these are estimates, and, and ultimately, it's never known, really, what that true probability is. And the really kind of the game is in trying to um, find the closest, you know, you, you know a, a probability that is very useful when compared to what uh, given odds are. So, so, okay, that's what P is. It's the true probability, as best as you can estimate it. Uh, and then B is the given odds from the bookmaker. So they would B comes from when the odds are given. It might be in money line, so you have to convert to B into this form B to one against. Q is just the probability or the true probability that the event doesn't happen. So once you know that P is what P is, you can just subtract it from one. So for example, if the probability was 60% of the team winning, then probability doesn't win is just 40%. One minus uh, 0.6. So Q is the true probability of the event not happening. Okay, so we go back exactly to the example uh, that I was just running through in those questions here, numbers 7, 8, and 9. Each of them began with given odds of plus 200. Right? 
So suppose the given odds on our event are plus 200. So the bookmaker is saying 2 to 1 odds. Right? It's 2 to 1 against. So the plus 200, plus 200 means 2 to 1 against. It also means that the bookie is saying 33% chance that it happens. And you could say, well, I think it's higher than 33%. Um, and if, in fact, it was actually tr actually 50% probability that this event was going to happen, and you had this, um, suppose that you had it several times, but even if it was only a one time when bookmaker says 33% chance, and you say, hmm, I think it's a 50-50 chance, the Kelly formula could tell you what the optimal fraction of your current bankroll you should bet so that you get the largest amount of return if you had this repeatedly, right? Because, of course, in one particular event, if it really was a 50% chance of occurring, you might lose, and you would lose that percentage. But if you could repeat that over and over and over again, where you had plus 200 that you could win 50% of the time, what should you bet? Uh, should you bet 50% of your bankroll? Should you bet 60%? 100%, well, it was only 50% chance of happening, so it seems like you could lose sometimes. You wouldn't want to bet everything, so what fraction should you bet? And that's what the Kelly formula tells us. It tells you the fraction. Each time the bet um, comes up as an opportunity, what fraction should you bet um, of your current bankroll? So the true probability, the true probability of the event is 0.5. So we're doing P times B minus Q, everything divided by B. So this is 0.5 times a B of 2. That's where I get the B from, because the plus 200 means 2 to 1. So the P comes from this. True probability if you actually knew, if that really was the true probability, or even if you estimated what it was, if you estimated it to be 50%, and the given odds were 2 to 1, then of course the Q is also 0.5, and B is 2. So 0.5 times 2, that's actually 1 minus 0.5. That's 0.5 on top, divided by 2. So that's where the 25% comes from. So the Kelly formula says the optimal fraction to bet is 25% of the bankroll every time that that opportunity came. Uh, and you would maximize your return if you were winning half the time at a, on 2 to 1 odds. OK, so I do have a video I've already made a long time ago about the um, derivation for this formula. Maybe sometime I'll go back and redo it, because I think I could make a much better one. But uh, I think that's where I'm going to stop with just a few examples to sort of set up this whole thing. Uh, and then maybe we can do some more. Uh, maybe I'll add some more to this later. Okay, I hope this was helpful. And thanks for watching. Okay, so getting back to the game tonight between Phillies and Nationals. The plus 180 on the Phillies and the minus 200 on the Nationals. Now, that particular, those particular numbers we can translate. The plus 180 on the Phillies, that means the uh, odds against the Phillies winning are 180 to 100, which means the probability is 100 over 280 that the Phillies win, which translates to 36% probability. And the Nats, they're heavily favored uh, here in these odds because uh, minus 200 says the odds against are 100 to 200. And that means a probability of 200 divided by 300, which is 2 thirds or 67%. So the money line odds are implying a 67% chance for the Nats to win. Now you might wonder, like, if you add those two together, that's 103%. And that extra 3% is exactly where the bookmaker makes money. It's really translating to the bookmaker would make $3 profit doesn't matter what happens. Three dollars profit out of every one hundred dollars goes to the to the bookie. So, do you take the bet or not? Well, if you thought it was higher than thirty six percent chance for the Phillies, you could bet the Phillies. And even if you lost in that case, if you had that opportunity repeatedly, you could make money on that. And if you thought the chance was higher than sixty seven percent for the Nats, well, then that would be the bet to take. 
and this is recorded before that game takes place, so I don't know what happened. It seems like that. Well, the Nats are at home, so that certainly explains why that's much higher, but, <laughs> well, I don't know what's going to happen. That's the whole point. That's what's fun.